In this exercise, we are going to consider a curve in the first quadrant of the xy plane. So let C be the portion of the circle of radius 2 in the first quadrant. We will parametrize this curve. Then we're going to do a scalar line integral. So we're going to evaluate f of x and y equals xy over the curve. And then we will do a vector line integral. So we'll set both up and evaluate them completely. And as we do so, I want you to focus on, you know, this is a scalar line integral. What do I need to set this up? Versus in this exercise, part three, it's going to be a vector line integral. What do I need to set it up? It's easy to get mixed up between the two types of line integrals. So really pay attention to exactly which pieces you need. The first thing both need is a parametrization. So find a counterclockwise parametrization of C that's going to rotate us from 0, 2 to 2, 0. OK. This is a parametric curve. So it's going to be a vector value function, which depends on a single parameter, T. And this is a circle. Let me sketch it over here. So we have our circle in the xy plane going from 2, 0 to 0, 2. I'm going to draw it clockwise, but we're rotating counterclockwise like that. Now, the circle of radius 2 has a always a default trigonometric parametrization, which is the radius times cosine theta and the radius times sine theta, or rather, 2 cosine t, 2 sine t. So I explained that a little bit strangely. But here, x squared plus y squared is 4, so that satisfies the equation of the circle. So it's always 2 cosine t, 2 sine t. t is the parameter, so the parameter here is like our angle. It's sweeping us from the x-axis to the y-axis. And then to insist that we're only in the first quadrant, our parameter will stop at pi over 2. OK, so that is our parametrization that we will use in both exercises 2 and 3 to compute these line integrals. The next thing we're going to need is the velocity vector here. So if we've got r of t, we can compute r prime of t. Just term by term differentiation gives us negative 2 sine of t to cosine of t. And then we will need the length of that for the scalar line integral. So both of these you need for both integrals. This one, the scalar line integral, we need to know the speed of the curve. In other words, the length of the velocity vector. You square both components, add them together here, you're going to get 4 sine squared t plus 4 cosine squared t inside of a square root. Sine squared plus cosine squared is, is 1, so this is the square root of 4, which is 2. This is a constant speed parametrization. Now we need to take our function f of x and y equals xy and plug in the coordinates x and y, so x equals 2 cosine t, y equals 2 sine t into this function. We can say that f of 2 cosine t, 2 sine t is going to be 4 cosine t, sine t. OK, I think we have everything we need. So the bounds on our parametrization are going to turn into bounds of integration. We have our function evaluated along the curve times the speed. So now we just set up our scalar line integral. Let me write over c x, y, d, s. This is like the conceptual form of this scalar line integral. We can explicitly compute this as the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, x, y in our uh, parametric description here is going to be the 4 cosine t sine t. Multiply that by the speed times 2, and then dt. All right, I'm going to pull the 4 times 2 out and write 8 times. Uh, you don't have to switch to u substitution if you see how to integrate this right away. Let's have u be sine of t. du is then cosine t dt, and that takes care of the rest of the integrand. So cosine sine dt is u du. So it's nice u substitution. Change our bounds at the same time. When t is 0, if I plug that into my uh, formula for u, u is sine of 0, which sends us to 0. And then when t is pi over 2, u is the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Okay, now we can anti-differentiate this. And we will get 8 times 1 half u squared evaluated from 0 to 1. So that's 4 times 1 squared minus 4 times 0 squared, so the answer is 4. OK, now
now let's do another integral over this curve. This is going to be a vector line integral. So in particular, we're going to take the vector field f of x and y, capital F of x and y, is y comma x, and evaluate that vector field in this direction over this curve. So we'll do f dot dr. We have our parametrization before. I've kept the velocity vector around. For a vector line integral, you want the velocity vector. So it's a little different than the scalar line integral computation where we wanted the speed. So stick with r prime of t. Let me go ahead and write above this what f of r of t is. So you want to take your parametric curve and plug it into your vector field. The vector field is y comma x. y is 2 sine t. x is 2 cosine t. So that's our vector field. Now to do the vector line integral, what we're going to say is we integrate over this curve, f dot dr in computational form, that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the vector field dot the velocity vector dt. So let me write it once as f of r of t dot r prime of t dt. Now we can actually plug in what we have. This is going to, oh, sorry, I said 2 pi, but I meant pi over 2. 2 pi is just kind of muscle memory. It's almost always 2 pi. Here it's pi over 2. Okay, so then we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2. Take the dot product of these two vectors, and we will get negative 4 sine t, sine squared t, rather, plus 4 cosine squared t, dt, like that. To integrate this, I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to pull the 4 out integrate from 0 to pi over 2. When I pull the 4 out, I have negative sine squared t plus cosine squared t, or alternatively cosine squared t minus sine squared t. That's a difference of squares. So I'm going to write cosine of t plus sine of t times cosine of t minus sine of t dt. Okay, so if you multiply that back together, you get cosine squared t minus sine squared t. This is neat, so if I let u be this first term, so let's do u substitution. u is cosine of t plus sine of t. When you differentiate, you get that du is negative sine of t plus cosine of t, and that's the second term. So if I keep going to the right, this is going to be 4 times the integral of u du. Now let's change our bounds, though, and when t is 0, u is cosine of 0 plus sine of 0, which is 1 plus 0 is 1. On the other hand, when t is pi over 2, we plug in and we get u is 0 plus 1, which is 1. Overall, this integral is 0.